Whether you're cold, scared, or listening to some great music, you've likely experienced goosebumps at some point in your life. But have you ever wondered why this strange change takes over your body? Named after the way poultry looks when plucked, goosebumps are a fairly useless trait in humans, which have been passed on by our ancestors. Each hair actually has a tiny muscle attached to it called the erector pili muscles, and when these muscles contract, the hair stands up on end. This contraction creates a shallow depression around the hair, causing the surrounding area to protrude, and it's the stress hormone adrenaline which triggers this physiological change to occur. So what triggers adrenaline? For one, being cold. In animals with much more hair on their body, this response helps them to stay warm. The standing hair is able to trap more air and thermoregulate it, ultimately providing an insulated barrier. Apart from this, adrenaline is also triggered under stressful situations, leading to the fight or flight response, like when you're scared. Cats are a perfect example. If you give them a spook, their hair shoots up on end. This involuntary evolutionary response allows animals to appear bigger and more intimidating. But why music has the ability to cause chills, or frisson as it's called, is not fully understood. One interesting theory suggests that elements of music such as sudden volume changes or unexpected unique sections induce a subconscious fear response. The body loves predictability, and so anything surprising to the autonomic system stimulates an alarm. But this fear quickly subsides as our brain realizes, hey, it's just music. And this contrast in experience causes the frisson and your goosebumps. There are other theories as well. Ultimately, the brain is extremely complex, and so a relationship between music, emotion, and physiological responses is difficult to decipher. But in science, it's okay to say that we don't know. Yet. Got a burning question you want answered? Ask it in the comments or on Facebook and Twitter. And subscribe for more weekly science videos.